Hello, we have a new sim release today. It's 0 0.49 beta. And last time I asked you what you want me to do next, um, I gave you the option of the gamification, uh, basically putting some sort of games in to basically teach you how to fly with a quad to, to do things, but at the same time having fun, or make the plane flyable. And it was real touch and go. The gaming had it, then the plane had it, then the gaming had it. Eventually the plane went out. I think the final mark was like 51 to 49%. It was really, really close all the way through. So a plane I did. This turned out to be not that easy. Um, I already had a plane flying in the AI situation, but because all the code revolved all around a quad and expecting quad, it took a long time to basically put the plane in various bits and pieces. In fact, I just found um, a bug that I just had to fix uh, where it wasn't basically getting the... If you went in and dynamically changed the radio and reversed the channel, it wasn't going back if you were flying the plane at the time. So that was that was a nightmare. So there's various things I'm quite happy with. There's a few things I'm not happy with and need more work. But again, I'm asking you guys to say, what do you want me to work on next? What are the bits that are important to you? And we'll sort them out. So let's jump in to the sim because there's a few things you will probably want to do if you want to fly the plane. All right, here we are on the sim. I've got this uh, radio connected as per usual. This is my T12 Pro. Any radio should do, joystick, that sort of thing, as long as it presents itself to the operating system as a joystick. And if you do want to fly the plane and you've got a regular sort of radio with some sort of um, sliders, then this is where you'll probably want to do some stuff because what I included in the plane is the pan and tilt idea because I like that in a plane. Unless you're in a like, flying wing where you're just looking out the front, it, it's nice to look up. So one of the first things you'll have to do if you want to use pan and tilt is set yourself up an extra two channels, assign them to your sliders, and then go and remap the controls. Which is now, I have to say, um, can feel a little bit lengthy. So pitch, roll, throttle, your reset, flip, pan, tilt and um, you'll see there if we look at the radio debug all our channels are there we've got all our bits and you can test them out make sure they're okay one word of warning here um, if you've got uh, a radio which has got a bit of a dodgy dead zone if uh, you see these sort of shaking about and like if the pans like doing doing this sort of movement increase the dead zone because this will really affect the camera it will look like the whole thing shaking um, that pan tilt needs to be quite still and yes, this is one of my areas. Now I've put these extra things in, I was like, wow, this remap control takes a while now. So one thing I want to do is yet another rewrite of the remapping. So we'd still have the, like, the remap controls and calibrate sticks, but we'd call them a wizard. So you do them all there. And then instead of radio debug, it'd probably be advanced radio settings. So I'd want to be able to go into any of these accesses and say, okay, for this axis, I want to allocate it to roll, or I want to recalibrate just this axis, or I want to maybe use the buttons to say, and buttons, by the way, don't mean regular buttons like um, on a on a game controller. The the Tyrannus, for example, only has eight channels which it assigns to axis. After that, all your switches, anything else, come out in joystick terms as a button. So hopefully, I'll be able to do something there. So you can go into this menu and like I want to assign axis five to reset without having to go through the whole remap wizard. Anyway, that's that's a future thing. We've got that set up now. So um, let's go back. So I've got the throttle on. This is the actual quad flying. Nothing's changed there. I'm just going to turn the sound off. Um, that is all good. So what you do to get into the plane is you go to the scenarios menu. You will notice now that it's slightly changed. Up the top we've got this thing RC model and if you click on that it will change to plane. If you click on it again it will change to quad. So you can click on that and you can say launch and I'm going to turn this up to get a little bit of volume on it. This is the plane and I actually sampled that plane from a plane on the wall up there that looked a little bit like this plane with the forward motor. So this should be at least sounding a bit like a plane, which I'm going to turn off. So one thing here, and this is yet another thing, um, I found that we had real problems with what's called wheel colliders. These are supposed to act as physical base wheels that sort of bounce along um, 
within the sort of landscape and react properly. They seem to have a real problem with lightweight things. So the cars I've got in the game, they the suspension really works well, but the actual scale weight of the cars is way beyond what a car should be. And so when this had regular wheel colliders, it bounced around. And so what I found is if I try and go slow, I get this sort of horrible bouncy bit. So as you increase the throttle, you'll notice nothing happens until you get a certain amount and then it starts going. At that point, you're okay. Now, at this point, you've got um, various things you can do. Obviously, you can fly it around. Not a problem. You've got the, the pan. I've allocated to this bit here. You see I can pan back and forth. And I can go in conjunction with the tilt so I can sort of like look below me, kind of look behind. I always like to look over the wing as I sort of do a turn, that sort of thing. Right now, um, I took a while designing how the plane works and, and uh, took a lot of flying with it. I've designed it so it's really quite floaty. So it is quite floaty and you can fly at low speeds, but it's still set up so if I sort of pull up here and I come off the power then it will stall and fall back down again. But it's quite easy to recover that stall unless you're very low down it will recover that speed okay. And you can see here that we're gliding along quite happily and we can go for a long area and, and unless we try and abuse things and we do that. At this point you'll notice the controls become very washy and uh, and just don't work. A little bit like if you were stalling a plane you'd get that as you tried to control it it would it would not react very well because it needs that forward speed to do it. The other things you've got in the plane are you've got your camera angles so these can be changed the same as the quad. Um, if you look if you press return You've got a throttle multiplier and a gravity multiplier, which are set by the one, two, three, four keys. That's all I've got. I haven't got any rates set up at the moment. And again, I'm asking you guys what you might like there. The things I think you might want are things like rates. At the moment, it's quite sensitive. So you can like fly it along hard and you can go into rolls and you know, you can fly it inverted if you want to. You can, uh, and you've got enough power if you put the, the rudder all the way over to and get the power up you can pretty much knife edge it uh, and talking about so what the controls do the the d button still works so you can see the the actual control input i'm putting in here and as its default settings it's actually pretty powerful if you put the throttle on all the way um, it really does travel along quite quickly um, and that's you know you can pretty much go vertical just about um, and certainly have no problems you know doing aerobatics and flying along upside down um, if you want to and it, it's pretty quick to react and that's why I thought yeah maybe maybe people want a dual rate to make it a little bit more gentle but as I said if you fly it slowly um, it reacts slower because that's you know there's not as much uh, coming over the wings that said there is no actual simulation of wind here. I haven't got any wind or wind direction um, so you can pretty much land it in any way you want and it will react the same. Let's let's try this now if we come down for a landing. Uh, the only thing I kind of like doing with it is uh, using the shadow as a very good guide about how high I am. So if we come down here little float and let's try and uh, flare it up yeah not bad landing so after filming all of this uh, about the sim I realized I forgot a couple of features about the plane that people might find interesting the first one is the external camera view this is the same as a quad you press C and you go to the external camera one interesting thing in here is that when I did this I forgot to take out the pan and tilt but then I saw exactly how it worked I thought that's quite cool I'm actually gonna leave that in so you can kind of slightly move around the plane as you sort of fly it from an external angle which I thought was quite good fun. The other one was line of sight mode just press L and you'll flick between line of sight and FPV you get positioned behind the plane and much like the quad I've included this little close-up window where you can sort of see what your plane's doing if it's not obvious to you uh, when you look up at the sky there. 
Uh, this seemed pretty realistic to me because I'm not the greatest line of sight flyer in the world, so I tried to land and just crashed. Yep, that looks very much like one of my landings. Uh, pretty accurate, I think. So yeah, that's the plane. The, the sort of feedback I'm looking for is how you feel it's handling, what sort of things you'd like to see change in it, is there anything else you'd like to see? One thing I thought actually might be useful in a plane where it's not in a quad is some sort of stability mode. Um, I notice when I'm sort of flying and I'm looking and I'm turning, sometimes I can sort of fall out a bit because I've, I've neglected to know where I am or perhaps an artificial horizon to know exactly how your plane is uh, angled during that. One thing you can also do uh, with the plane is absolutely have things like the cars going. So if we set cars to free, fast and uh, launch that. The difference I make here with the quad and the plane is I don't um, put the plane back and sort of reset it in its landing area. So you can start these off dynamically and just get chasing. So if I go from here and I say that I want to chase the plane that will just take off and we should be able to see it if we look over here oh, we can just see the trail there and so you can practice your uh, formation flying get a bit fast now <laughs> yeah so all that stuff works the stuff that's on my list to do's is right now the plane is single player only. You can't take it in the online multiplayer mode. Um, it, it just won't work. There's a lot more code to write there uh, because just getting it integrated back into the main code base was quite a lot of work. So there's a lot more to do to get the online mode to understand how it all works and stuff. Uh, but that's the plane thing. Please check it out. Um, see what you think of it find problems, please report them to me. There's an email address at the bottom. You can open an issue, do whatever, and I'll endeavor to sort it out. So the, the other thing I wanted to talk about was um, what else we've got going on in this update. And there were a couple of things. Um, one of which is the long awaited crane. We've been working on the crane for a while now, uh, and it is finally here over at the Bando or the construction house getting um, constructed. So several things about the crane. Um, we made a nice little joke about it which we're very proud of and I'll go and show you. It's basically the fact that the crane operators got fed up of us flying there so they've put a no drone sign. That's our, our hilarious little joke. The, the other thing to say about the crane is uh, cranes aren't static. Um, our crane moves. You will see it ro rotate. It's actually rotating at the moment. Um, between several angles and you'll see the sled move back and forth. This basically the the actual movement of the crane not the sled happens about once a minute so it stays still enough for you to do things but there's plenty of movement there um, if you want to sort of get a little bit more dynamic with it and decide what's going on. We've also built the crane so things are just the right size for you to fit. If the thing stops moving or if it doesn't stop moving, if you're feeling particularly brave, we should be able to fit down the end of here. And there is just room to do that. Uh, ditto. So the triangle, the triangular sections are all the sort of same size. So you should be able to fit through um, any of those sections you see. So let's see if we can get through this bit okay. Like so. Uh, and yeah, that's going to continue moving. You see the sled just move there. Um, if you want to do crane watching, <laughs> go, go for it. Your heart's content. It will carry on moving around. The, um, the other thing which um, a lot of people were saying about is the bando or the construction house, whatever you want to call it, is the floors were too thin. If we look, uh, this has been remodeled now and this is how thin they were previously. Um, it's actually three meters, which should be enough space. But um, because people just weren't having fun with it and found it a bit tricky, what I decided to do is go back and make it a little more in construction. So we've taken two floors out and we've opened up one of the sides, kind of as if this corner, the, the uh, left front corner here is, is taken out completely. So with that out of the way, you can really sort of, you know, go around and do some stuff in here. 
what I also did is make the windows bigger. So you should be able to get through here, go straight through a window, go pretty quickly, uh, and just have a bit more fun with it. Now, there is a bug in this one that I have logged myself to look at. You notice as we go in, there is a bit of a shadow flicker at one point, or over here. Sometimes the shadow just disappears. I, I don't know what this is yet. Um, I need to investigate that, but it's on my list of bugs to do. Hopefully it doesn't spoil the fun of like flying through the bando uh, and just getting a bit more speed up there. Let's try a power loop over the top. Yep, that worked quite nicely. And uh, yeah, you can just really go in and start getting some decent speed up now and doing whatever you like with it. So as I said, there's a, a few things I already know about that I want to fix. I want to put the plane in the online multiplayer game so some of you can fly planes, some of you can fly quads, bash into each other, do whatever, or nice formation flying so you can go around together. Um, I want to put the AI vehicles in the multiplayer game as well so you can all chase cars or all chase uh, an AI plane. We've got the rewrite of the some of the joystick calibration to do so it gives you more easier fine grain control so you can just say I want to allocate this axis to pan instead of going through the whole remapping wizard thing. And we've got that annoying shadow flicker just around the bando to sort out. Did you notice as well we've managed to texture the bando a little bit now so that you see brickwork and concrete. Uh, just finding out a little bit more about how the game engine works and mostly about how we tile textures. So that's the sort of thing I'm looking to do for next time along with a, a bunch of other things. As far as the plane goes there's a whole lot of controls over it about how floaty I can make it, how it responds to turns and stuff but what I didn't want is have this massive figure of strange massive floating point numbers that you could alter. Um, I wanted something a little bit more direct so it's important to know what the important things are and that's why I figured it might be stuff like more RC rates as opposed to anything else. You can change the floatiness to a certain amount by altering the gravity or I can put options in to decide on how much lift will generate maybe sort of low medium high instead of these weird massive numbers anyway that is it for now and um, the downloads are below if you're a steam user uh, that will automatically update and if you're not a steam user but you want it you can just go to steam and get it for like a buck 99 or you can download it for free from the github site if you're into installing your own zip files which I know some of you are, some of you aren't, and you've got the option. Anyway, that's me for now. Let me know how it goes, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing, and if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.